Today I'm going to be discussing Disney's doubling down on Team Clown World and the company's clear and present desire to disciple the nations in sexual perversion. I'll also be touching upon the question of how long people, especially Christians, will continue to give not only their financial resources to Disney, but their time, their hearts, and their minds. So let's get started. Several employees within the Disney Corporation, including those who have some power and some prominence within the organization, have voiced their outrage and despair concerning the legislation coming out of Florida, the Parental Rights Protection Bill, as well as their unyielding support for all things satanic. Now, this isn't really news, as this is really always who Disney has been, or at least this is the Disney of late. This is who they have been for going on 10, 20 plus years. So the parental rights legislation in in Florida, what that ended up doing was it gave Disney the cover, the opportunity, however you want to phrase it, that they need to basically come out full tranny, full sodomite, full critical race theory, full woke, full social justice warriors. It has given them the opportunity to do that. And If anything, an additional thing that it's done is it has exposed light on the cockroaches and it has given us some clarity as to who Disney really is. The suspicion has always been there. It's been evident from much of their content that they have gone in this perverted and deviant direction. But now, due to Florida's legislation, and kudos to Ron DeSantis, who apparently wields some massive power due to the fact that he has totally broken Disney's brain. This reminds me of when Donald Trump got elected and all of the fake and phony conservatives got exposed as fake and phony conservatives because not only did they ditch Donald Trump or never support him in the first place, they used that as a scapegoat, as a reason for why they ditched conservatism and the Republican Party. Not that I necessarily have a problem with them ditching the Republican Party. The Republican Party at this point is rather useless. But there is something to be said for conservatism in spite of what what I've at least covered in recent videos, the issues within conservatism. But it reminds me of that, how Donald Trump broke many people's brains and ended up exposing to us and giving us clarity. We knew where a lot of people were actually at or the slippery slope that they were sliding down. Donald Trump helped push them down to the bottom. Well, this is what DeSantis has done. He has pushed Disney all the way down to the bottom of the slippery slope. And now they know, and now we know rather, exactly where Disney stands. And I appreciate that clarity. So thank you. Governor DeSantis. So what I want to do is I want to have us listen to, straight from the horse's mouths, two Disney employees talking about this. So let's listen now to two Disney employees pledging their allegiance to their father, the devil. Uh, The first, let me bring it up here on the screen, is this gentleman right here. And as the tweet captions the video that we are about to listen to. The video is only 21 seconds long, the first one, but as the tweet captures this video. So we have this Disney production coordinator, Alan March, who says that his team is committed to exploring queer stories and promoting trans, bisexual, and gender non-conforming characters. And he also says that kids are getting all of this information from the media and that there's a lot of power to that. So that's the context of the clip. So with that context, let's play the clip. And all this content's going for to kids who don't know any of this. And even if they're in. And yes, that is the voice of a man, allegedly, that you're listening to. A household like Keith uh, that have uh, supportive parents, they're still getting all of this information from media of what is normal. And we just, it's a, there's a lot of power to that. And it just needs to be acknowledged. And, and I would agree here with this gentleman to a certain extent, Mr. March, Mr. Alan March. I would agree with Alan March to a certain extent. I'll acknowledge that this, there is indeed a lot of power in media and that men like this, men like him, are using that power to corrupt your children. This is within the framework and the context of him discussing how Disney, the company that he works for, the company that he is a production coordinator for, that they are committed to exploring queer stories, promoting, 
promoting trans, bisexual, and gender non-conforming characters. They want to normalize, dare I say, groom children and adults if they're willing to allow themselves to be manipulated and coaxed into finding this kind of behavior normal. Want to groom children into... See, he's talking specifically about children here. That's what makes this particularly pernicious and disgusting and evil and wicked. Purposefully using their media giant status to ensure that this happens. This is what he wants to have happen. So this man, who I'm pretty sure that if he got in a fist fight with a stuffed animal, the stuffed animal would whoop his behind. That man wields incredible power over our children if we allow him to, and many of us do. Many of us just allow him to do it. Sit our children in front of Disney and just allow the tranny sodomite and other sexual perversion and filth be filtered in to our children even if it's just a brief scene here a minor character there we are allowing this to happen and even if it's one of those films perhaps it's an older disney film where none of this stuff is present or perhaps it's a film where it's not as obvious or not as overt or whatever the case may be and i'm going to touch more upon this later in the video but we are still training the affections of our children to this company that is now actively seeking, has been seeking, but is now coming out, if you will, about how they are actively seeking to normalize this perverted behavior and this perverted worldview. And especially as Christians, this ought not be so. We ought not to let this happen. Well, and that's just one of many, but here's my other example, one of many examples of employees of Disney going down this road. So here's another one. So this one right here, this is Disney president Kara Burke, and she says that as the mother of a transgender child and a pansexual child, and I'll have something to say about that in a second here, that she supports having many, many, many LGBTQIA characters in our stories and wants a minimum of 50% of characters to be alphabet soup, mafia, and racial minority. So again, you have a corporate president for Disney saying that, yes, we are looking to purposefully put these kinds of characters in our story. So here's what she has to say. I'm, I'm here as a mother of, of two queer children, actually, um, uh, one transgender child um, um, and one pansexual child, um, and and also as a leader. Let me just let me just go ahead and stop right there. So uh, this woman, this uh, corporate president, she does not have a transgender and a pansexual child. That's nonsense. That's gobbledygook. That's a word salad. That's made up verbiage to describe people attempting to normalize a mental illness. She does not have a transgender and a pansexual child. She has one of three options. She either has two boys, she has two girls, or she has a boy and a girl who obviously have a really terrible mother who, who is not only allow either allowing her children to indulge in a fantasy, a delusion rather, not only is she allowing them to indulge in this, but she is actively, prom she's promoting it. She's, she's not just allowing them to indulge in it, she's pushing it. She's attempting to make something that is utterly fake and a delusion, she's attempting to make it real, and she's doing it to her own children. To her own children. Here's what you do have, though, lady. You have future patients for psychologists. And I hope I'm wrong, but you possibly have two future suicide victims because people within the gender dysphoria community, if that's even what you want to call it, are at a very high risk of suicide, whether they're pre-op or whether they're post-op because their problem isn't pre-op or post-op. Their problem isn't they're the wrong gender. No, 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 no. The problem is that they need to be redeemed by a savior. The problem is that they are wicked sinners with broken image-bearing capacities that need to be mended and fixed. They need to be saved from their sins, and they need to be given the power over sin and death, and that only comes from Christ. The transformation that these children and people who actually have this issue need is Christ, not an insane, wicked mother who uses her children as puppets for the promotion of a perverted worldview. Now let's continue. 
Um, and that was the thing that really got me because I have heard so much from so many of my colleagues over the course of the last couple of weeks um, in open forums and through emails and phone conversations. And um, I feel a responsibility to speak um, not just for myself, but for them. Uh, to all of us, we, we had a we had an open forum last week at 20th where, um, again, the home of, of really incredible groundbreaking LGBTQIA stories over the years where um, one of our execs stood up and said, you know, we only have a handful of queer leads in our content. And I went, what? I, that can't be true. And I and I and I realized, oh, it, it actually is true. We have many, many, many LGBTQIA characters in our stories, and 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 yet we don't have enough leads um, and narratives in which gay characters just just get to be characters um, mm -hmm. and and not have to be about gay stories. And so um, that's been very eye opening for me. Um, and and I I can tell you. Um, it's something that I feel perhaps had this moment not happened, um, I as a leader and me as my colleagues would not have focused on. And and going forward, um, I, I certainly will be more so. I know that we will be, and um, and I hope this is a moment where, shoot, um, the 50% of the tears, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> are coming. Um, uh, Crocodile tears. We, we just don't allow each other to go backwards. Okay, so that is that wicked woman and what she had to say. So don't be fooled. As I previously mentioned and alluded to, the Florida bill simply pulled back the curtain. It simply exposed who the Wizard of Oz actually was, demonstrated the emperor has no clothes on. They're afraid, though. Disney is certainly afraid, or they would not be fighting back the way they are. They would not have reacted to this bill the way that they have if they weren't afraid that the narrative they're peddling and pushing and propagating wasn't being legitimately fought back against, and successfully being fought back against. Thus, wherever we can, we must continue to expose and punish these grooming deviants, whether it's somebody like a Ron DeSantis doing what he is doing, and I believe it's Tennessee, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, that is also beginning to put together legislation similar to the legislation that Florida put together, good. Whether you're somebody up there with that kind of power or whether you're just a normie like myself who can make sure that our children or that I myself am not watching this, whatever we can do to expose it, whatever we can do to fight back against it, we need to continue to do it because they are afraid because people on Team Sanity and Team Morality are finally starting to get some Ws. And I have another question about this woman. Where is her husband? Where is the father of these children? Even if he's not around, even if she's not married, even if he's passed away or he's a Debbie dad or whatever the case may be, this still applies because there are countless women out there who are just like this woman, who are propagating this nonsense while the man sits around and does not a thing about it. Where are the men? Where have they gone? Why are so many spineless, wicked men not protecting children, but instead are like this clown, Alan March? Why are there so many men like him running around perverting that which is true, good, and beautiful and taking children down with them? Why are there so many men like that? And not enough men who look a woman like this in the face and say, no, you wicked, evil, insane witch. I'm not going to allow you to use my children like this. I'm not going to allow you to use my children as pawns in your game, in your woke game. Nor am I going to allow you to delude my children into thinking this. I'm just, where are they? I know they're out there. I know they exist. But at least in the context of this woman and women like her, within that context for sure, where are they? Where ha where the hell have they gone? And I know exactly what I mean when I use that word. All right, so what can even be done about this, right? So hurting Disney's bottom line is probably out of the question. Even if every conservative, if every Christian switched off Disney Plus and canceled their subscription, there's still more than enough support from people who don't care and from the base that they have in China and other countries 
they're going to be fine. They're going to continue to make the content that they want to make. What you can do is you can give your money to alternative content producers. If there's a content producer out there who's making stuff that doesn't spit in the face of your worldview, spit in the face of your God, and spit in the face of his law, then you can give your money to them. So, for instance, Canon Press has a lot of material they're producing, including putting together some children's material. Uh, you can be support, uh, supporting Lore, L-O-O-R, that is Marcus Pittman's Christian media company that he's been working on getting some content out there. There are tons of Christian content producers, whether they're doing podcasts and they have websites, they have media, whatever it is, find somebody, VidAngel, uh, the Mormons, God bless them, doing a great job with VidAngel. I would recommend supporting them. Find other people to give your money to. Even if you can't defeat Disney by taking money away from them, you can begin to build alternative institutions and alternative media outlets and content producers that can fight back against it. Also, here's a question. Do you want to be a slave of Disney? Do you want to be enslaved to Disney? And I have to repent of this here because I have known for a long time I should have cut the Disney plus cord. I should have said no to Disney. But I was enslaved by them. I was tickled by Star Wars, by the MCU, by certain things that they have on there, by appropriate movies that they had for my children on there. And I needed to finally say no to this. And shame on me for not saying no to them earlier. Now, I was hypervigilant in terms of what my children watched, but nonetheless, and no more. There's no more Disney Plus in my household. It is gone, and it is not coming back. And I don't care if that means no more Star Wars for me or no more MCU. I do not want to be a slave of Disney. Is that you? This reminds me of Brave New World. So we're reading Brave New World right now in the senior literature course that I teach. And the people in Brave New World are enslaved to their passions. That's one of the ways in which the government in Brave New World, the world state, keeps its citizens in order and under control and makes sure, and makes sure that they tow the government line. And they are kept enslaved by free access to sex without any consequences. I mean, there are consequences, but without any obvious consequences, so children, diseases, things like that. They are given this, a drug called Soma, which the author describes as the best of Christianity and alcohol without the side effects, meaning that you don't have any sort of guilty conscience or shame when you do something bad. Soma just makes you feel good. And it's like, a, imagine taking a drug and it giving it getting giving you this incredible high, and then there's no side effects. So no hangover, no coming down from it, no withdrawals, nothing along those lines. Although the the taking the drug does slowly kill you and shortens your lifespan. But they, the people in Brave New World are enslaved. They're especially enslaved to Soma. Anytime anything goes bad and there's any hint of struggle or suffering about to happen in their life, they just pop a pill of Soma, go on a, what's called a Soma holiday, and then they're good to go. Is that what Disney is? Are we just so enamored by the MCU, by the movie selection, by the TV shows, by Star Wars, that we're willing to be a slave to them? Because the Apostle Paul says that all things are permissible, but not all things are beneficial. I believe he's writing this to the Corinthians. So Paul is saying, look, there, I, I can do all these things. These, it's not a sin. I can do all these non-sinful things that I want, but are they beneficial? Is this actually good for me? And he follows up this line of thought by saying essentially that I will be a slave of nothing or a slave of no person. So if I am doing something that's permissible, but it gets its hooks in me and it enslaves me, then it's no longer beneficial. I, I will be a slave of nothing. Paul will only permit being a slave of Christ. Are we allowing ourselves to become a slave of Disney? I know I did for some time. Stop giving your time, your heart, your mind to Disney. Stop giving them your affections. We got to order our affections so that we love the right things. Disney is not the right things. We ought not to love Disney. So this whole idea of ordering your affections, um, I think it's orderi, amoris in Latin, and it's either Augustine or Aquinas that talked about it. I can't remember which, perhaps it was both. This idea of that we need, we ought to love the lovely. We ought to love something I've talked about before, that which is true, good, and beautiful. We ought to be insulted and offended by lies. We ought not to love that. We ought to love that which is true. We ought not to love that which is bad, that which is unrighteous. We ought to 
despise that and flee from that. We ought to love which is good and pursue what is good. We ought to love that which is beautiful. We ought not love that which is ugly. We ought to shun and reject that which is ugly. We ought to order our affections. And when we give our time and our heart and our mind over to Disney, that is, again, that's a way that we get enslaved to them and we get our affections disordered and we're loving the wrong kinds of things. And Disney is absolutely already attempting to and is going to continue to attempt to shove the wrong things down our throat. And same thing that I just said, stop giving that, the time, the heart, and the mind of your children over to Disney. Stop giving that, making sure their affections are ordered. That is prime a prime directive for Christian parents, Ephesians 6, 4, to raise our children in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. One of the words that's used in that Ephesian passage in Greek is this word paideia, and it means to enculturate your child into a culture. We are called to enculturate our children into a Christian culture. Disney is the antithesis, the opposite of a Christian culture. So will will we continue to compromise? Is it a, is it a sin to watch Disney? No. But all things are permissible, but not all things are beneficial. I will be a slave of nothing. You also ought to be a slave of nothing. I think that's enough for today. God bless. We'll catch you next time.